All right, so we're going to talk about She-Hulk episode 5 today. Uh, I did not review episode 3 and 4. My last video was on 2, so we'll give... Uh, I'll give my opinions on episode 3 and 4 real quick. Episode 3 was terrible. Uh, I was interested in the Abomination stuff, but it turned out to be completely farcical with the parole hearing. Wong is a terrible Sorcerer Supreme that just, you know, broke him out to, to test his strength on him as Sorcerer Supreme or whatever. It's... It's really nothing, and it's only half the episode. The other half is the uh, the the character. I think his name is misogynist. I think that might be his name. It might as well be. Uh, he's <laughs> he's suing to get money back because this elf lady is pretending to be Megan Thee Stallion and got a bunch of money from him. And Megan Thee Stallion is also in the episode because we need to give people something to talk about because there'd be nothing without that. Uh, and the court scenes are completely like ridiculous and, and you know, just lame and poorly written and not funny. I think I chuckled like twice in the whole episode. It's bad. <laughs> uh, her twerking at the end. People were like, oh my God, she looks a baddie. Look at that. And it's terrible. You can't even really tell that that's a person at points. There's part, the parts where it focuses in on her ass. And I'm like, I guess there's an ass in that suit. I guess. I mean, it just looks so uncanny. She's wearing this big ass suit and the CG is terrible. And I don't know what you're getting from that, but whatever. So I didn't like that third episode. Uh, the fourth episode, I actually did like. I thought it was pretty good. The best episode up to that point. And uh, the Wong stuff with the magician that's using the sling ring to, you know, uh, you know, make his act better because his act is shitty and nobody likes it. But he's putting people in danger as a result. Uh, I like that. Wong's using She-Hulk. I think he was trying to uh, send him a cease and desist so he doesn't use magic anymore and put people at risk. Uh, that was all right. The lady that's always drunk that spoiled Soprano, uh, the Sopranos ending, uh, that was lame, right? Wong, really? You don't know what happens at the end of Sopranos at this point? I mean, come on. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Like, you've been spoiled at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she, uh, she hopes also going on dates, and I actually thought those dates were kind of funny. Uh, you know, there's a point when she's not she hulk where she goes on a date and there's this tense moment of who's going to pay for the check. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, there's a guy that clearly works out, and he's asking her how much she lifts uh, when she actually does go on the date, says She-Hulk. And the CG actually at, is at its best in those parts when she's on the date, I guess because they really wanted to do her up and make her look good for the dates scenes. Um, so that was all right. Uh, there's also the guy that she ends up hooking up with, uh, and he's, like, ridiculously perfect, saying, like, all the right things. And I'm thinking, this guy better be, you know, playing some kind of con because this is too perfect. You know, oh my God, I just hate dating sites. Oh, they just dehumanize you, you know what I'm talking about? It, it, it feels like he's, you know, I'm so tired of talking about myself. Let's talk about you. I mean, it, it's just, it's all the, he's saying like all the things that she clearly wants to hear. So I'm like, okay, so this guy's more than, the, the way that they can save this is if this is most, at least partially an act. And so when he does wake up with Jen, he's like, whoa, you're not my type of walks out. So, you know, he's not, I guess, as perfect as, he was trying to let himself on, um, let on to be. So I thought that was all right. Uh, she also, before she hooks up with that guy, she actually fights some of those demons that the guy lets in, the magician, uh, with Wong. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, yeah, this is a superhero show. Well, at least partially. And I liked it. I liked seeing She-Hulk kick some ass. So I did like that fourth episode, even though there's parts of it that are still really annoying to me. Um, could you state your name for the record? Madison King. Madison is with two N's. One why, but it's not where you think. Now this episode is another bad episode, episode five. <laughs> it's another bad one. And it kind of, it, it, it put into perspective all the things that don't really work here uh, when it comes to the writing. Because, you know, we have Titania come back and it's complete nonsense. She almost killed people in that court scene in the first episode. She's out with seemingly no consequences. I don't know if that's supposed to be some kind of commentary on how rich and famous people get away with certain things, but she at least needs to sit down for a little bit longer than she did. I mean, because she apparently gets out, uh, has all this line of all this bullshit, these bullshit products, and is able to trademark the she oak name, something that I'm sure is a process and takes some time, and then, <laughs> and then goes on to then get representation to then sue She-Hulk for using the name. So, uh, Jen you know, goes to go talk to her, not as She-Hulk. At first I was like, okay, she could pull up as She-Hulk and just like gains check her real quick. I mean, she knocked her out in one hit. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? But she goes to see her as Jen. 
and she kind of talks down to her or whatever. You know, they have a, a, an interaction. I do like how they brought this character back, you know, because we need an overarching rivalry or something to kind of tie these episodes together because them being completely weightless and completely separate from each other, I mean, that's not working because it, they're really, really, really not leaving an impression uh, from episode to episode. So I do like how she has a rivalry and that it's more than just physical. It's also, you know, playing like mind games with each other or, or suing, you know, suing her and things like that. She's more than just a physical adversary, which is cool. She's like, a, this is like a legit rivalry that they have going on. And I like that. I think she's going to come back later on, too. So that could be cool. But this is just not written very well. So the CG is still terrible. Um, there's a point when she's sitting in her office right after that. She talks to Titania. And it looks like it's a cutscene from a video game. Uh, like it may be a cutscene from Marvel's Avengers, that video game that came out not too long ago. <laughs> I mean, it just looks, she just looks so fake. I mean, that big ass suit and everything. It just doesn't look right. At certain points, she looks okay, but for the most part, she doesn't look that good. So she goes to talk to the other lawyer at the firm to represent her, uh, to uh, counter Sue, she, uh, not she, uh, uh, Titania. And they have kind of a you know, contentious relationship a little bit. Uh, I think that's from the comics. I have to assume it's from the comics because they didn't really set it up up to this point. And they kind of start to get along by the end of this episode too. So it's like, well, you didn't really earn that because we didn't really get to see much of it. But whatever, uh, she tells her she needs new suits and things like that. So the other lawyer, the male lawyer, I can't remember his name, uh, he is trying to get the Iron Man 3s. He's trying to get new shoes or something. So he asked the assistant for a favor and they're also going to get suits from the drip broker <laughs> so that Jen can have suits that actually fit. Now, this, this guy, this other lawyer, he's doing something interesting with his performance. So about 80 to 90% of his performance is just moving his face. I mean, he really is over-exaggerating like everything he says with his face. Uh, I need to go see the, the, the drip broker. I mean, that's how he's talking. I mean, there's even a point, uh, a point where he, they go to the drip broker, they're standing in front of his door, and... <sighs> He's just standing there, he's not saying anything, but he's really acting with his face. And he does that a lot. And I didn't notice it before now, but now it's really noticeable, it's really distracting. And it was making me laugh, ironically, <laughs> but whatever. And that's another thing with this dialogue. He's like, uh, you know, I gotta get what she's like, why do you need two pairs of Iron Man 3s or whatever? And he's like, one to rock, one to stock, or something like that. I was like, you guys are trying so hard to be cool. It's fucking cringy. It's like with the Megan Thee Stallion stuff. Man, you guys are trying too hard with this shit. But anyway, they go to the, see the drip broker. The drip broker is going to see She Hulk at some point. Uh, she Hulk has the you know the court case you know start with Titania, and they're really just playing you know uh, different points where she either accepts the name or doesn't. There's a point where she does the interview where she's like, you know what, I don't like the name, but I'm embracing it. Uh, and then there's another point where she's like, I'm not She-Hulk. So, you know, there's kind of, uh, there's kind of a question of, of whether she'll actually win the case or not. At a certain point, the judge is like, have you used the name in a personal capacity? And I already knew. It's going to play on the whole thing where she went on dates as She-Hulk. That just happened last episode. So I figured that was going to be the case, but she doesn't have that light bulb moment until later. Uh, she goes to see the drip broker. And this character was making me laugh because this is a straight up type. I mean, all the characters are types. The best friend is the supportive best friend. I mean, everybody's some kind of type. Nobody really has any dimension other than maybe She-Hulk because we actually get to see her more. And so the character ha is able to have more depth and we're able to really get in her head and things like that. All the other characters are types. But this character is literally, he's a designer stereotype. Oh, get out of here. I'm busy. You know, it, it, you know the real you know stuck up. You know, full of himself, you know, just has, he's, he's just too important to deal with them. I mean, he just can't, oh my God, darling, I just can't do it. Oh, it, it, it's just, it was too much, man. I've seen that same character in everything. I mean, he's, he's every character you've seen like that. And it's, uh, he was going so over the top at certain points that he was making me legitimately laugh though. But I was like, man, you guys are really not trying with this writing, are you? So he's going to make her suits. Um, at first, he acts like he has no time for her. I was like, okay, look at that. Oh, oh, a giant green woman just walked in here. 
right? Hulk's cousin. Go ahead and make her some suits, bro. What are we talking about? So uh, we finally get back to, uh, you know, the, the courtroom scene, and she's had that light bulb moment of, you know, the dates. So now her, her matcher or Tinder or whatever is going to be in the court case, and all those dates are going to be witnesses coming up and being like, hey, yeah, she was, you know, going by She-Hulk when we went on a date. And that was kind of funny, right? I thought that was the best part of the episode because I thought that was a good way to incorporate the dates from the previous episode into this episode. So I thought that was that was all right. I don't think they need to reiterate um, the fact that the really nice one is an intergen. I mean, he's really laying it on, on her. And it's so that we can feel bad for her. It's like, okay, well, all right. I mean, you, you, you're trying a little too hard. Though. I don't think you really needed to, to do that again. So because they testified, she ends up winning. And the whole thing feels pointless because I'm like, well, of course, she's been going by She-Hulk for this amount of time. She's been on the news and things like that. Everybody already calls her She-Hulk. It's very obvious that this person that she's been in a public altercation with already is just doing this to get back at her. It's very obvious to anybody, <clears throat> to anybody paying attention. So, you know, if you take the ending of that last episode, setting this up and this episode out, I feel like you wouldn't miss anything. Anything. It feels like they really just needed a plot. And so they're like, oh, let's just have her, I don't know, something that has to do with law, trademarks. Sure, she'll trademark her name. And that's it. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's lame. <laughs> the characters are types, and they're one-dimensional, like I said. The characters aren't really giving you much. The courtroom scenes are the worst scenes in the whole show because they feel like bad SNL sketches a lot of times because they're so overly farcical and ridiculous without actually being funny. And it just, like I said, when I review the second episode, they don't really, not, they don't leave an impact. They don't feel meaningful, right? I have to record this right after just watching the show. Disney Plus is still up on my TV. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, because if I waited even an hour, I probably wouldn't be able to talk about it. I'm, I'm telling you, the episodes I said in my other video, they're 30 minutes, they're actually not. The, the credits came up, uh, <laughs> I think at like 24, 25 minutes. And the beginning part of the show is the Marvel logo, a recap, the, a little bit, and then the She-Hulk logo. So it's really not even that. So there's very little content here anyway. So it doesn't help that the content is just so weightless and kind of meaningless, and it's like, okay, moving on. You know, I like She-Hulk. I like uh, Tatiana Maslany uh, in, in that role, but everything else is just kind of falling flat for me. I don't know. Uh, also... Uh, there is that moment where the drip broker brings her her suits and apparently that maybe she has a superhero suit and uh, he has a box for another customer. It's it's Daredevil's uh, mask. I was thinking, well, Daredevil already has somebody who makes his costumes. I didn't see season three of Daredevil, so maybe that changed. But anyway, and, and I was thinking, who's going to see this and get excited when we already know he's in the show? There's nothing to get excited about. So I was thinking to myself, they probably wanted this to be the actual moment where everybody's like, oh shit, Daredevil's in this. But they wanted people to watch the show. And they knew putting him in the trailer would get people hyped to watch the show just in general. So they sacrificed this reveal, which they should have just taken out at this point then, so that they could put him in the trailer to get the to get you know people's eyes on this, rather than them just hearing that he is coming up at some point at the end of the fifth episode. From a business standpoint, from a viewership standpoint, smart, but it feels pointless. Anyway, that's it. I've, I've been mostly underwhelmed and whatever. We'll, I'll, I'll see you again in the next couple episodes because I don't plan on you know, re reviewing the next at least like two episodes maybe. I'll probably be back for episode eight or maybe even just wait until the episode nine and just get it over with. But anyway, yeah, that's She-Hulk, and we're done.